Hi, and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with a summer transfer and moved to Arsenal. Now, um, the fixtures were released yesterday, and you can see from our first six games, it's going to be a tough start to the season. We begin, of course, with Newcastle away. Uh, also in there is Liverpool. We've also got in our first six games Tottenham as well. So listen, it's going to be a tough start to the season and the players that we bring in this summer are going to be very, very important. We want to hit the ground running, want to get off to a good start. Remember last year, you know what I mean, the first two games, Man City and Chelsea, you know what I mean, lost both of those. It was a really tough start, but a chance to get off to a decent start this season. Um, however... Who will we be bringing in? Now, lots of talk around today that um, Unai Emery is starting to prefer a move for Ryan Fraser over Yannick Carrasco. Now, we know that Arsenal have been heavily linked with Carrasco. Carrasco, we've been told, will cost around about £25 million. Uh, currently playing at Dali and Yifang, 25 years of old. And... Um, He's made no secret of it. He wants to return to Europe. He said that he's in negotiations with a club in Europe. He's refused to say which club that is, but everybody seems to think that that club is Arsenal and that they've been in advanced talks and uh, that a deal is close. However, as I said today, the talk is, is that Unai Emery would rather Ryan Fraser. Fraser had a great time of it last season. Seven goals, 14 assists, just behind Hazard on assists. And um, I think how Unai Emery is looking at it is that this guy can provide a lot of the bombs uh, for Lacazette and Aubameyang. And, you know, a lot of times last year we complained that those guys weren't getting enough service and he thinks that Fraser would do a better job of it. Um, comparing the two of them, they're both 25. They're both very, very good players. Um, Carrasco, as we said, would probably cost about £25 million. Pounds. That's what the club in China are saying they want for him. Ryan Fraser will cost more. Um, there was talk that um, Bournemouth want about £40 million for him. It's probably going to be around about the £30 million pound mark for him, so he'd be a bit more than Carrasco. But I'd like to put the question out there to you guys today. If you had a choice between the two of them, you can buy either of them, Yannick Carrasco or Ryan Fraser, who would it be for you? Which one of those two do you think would be more, more suited to Arsenal? Which one of those two that you think would be better for Arsenal? I would like to hear from you guys today. Leave it in the comments below and also vote in our poll. I'm really intrigued to find out who the fans would rather have, Ryan Fraser or Yannick Carrasco. But it seems that Arsenal are a bit torn between the two, but the manager favouring Fraser at the moment, but would love to hear from you guys. Arsenal also linked today with a goalkeeper, goes by the name of Marcus Schubert, um, currently plays for Dynamo Dresden, he's only 21 and um, was a goalkeeper that was identified by our previous scout Sven Mislintat, Mr Diamond Eyes himself, um, of course no longer at the club, left in January, a bit of a disaster that for me. Uh, we still haven't replaced him, by the way, although it is looking like Edu will take over from him. But anyway, uh, Marcus Schubert, um, really talented goalkeeper, was playing over in Bundesliga 2 last season. He's available on a free. His deal's come to an end at his current club, uh, Dynamo Dresden. They haven't yet uh, negotiated a new contract. And the reports are that Arsenal are looking to make him their first signing of the season, uh, Marcus Schubert. And Schubert will come in as a number two to Bernd Leno and uh, offer him serious, serious competition. They really do rate this guy. He's only 21, only just turned 21 as well. Um, so let's see how this one develops out over the next couple of days. But Marcus Schubert could be Arsenal's first signing of this season, available on a free. And we know we love a free here at Arsenal. Uh, of course, that means that David Ospina definitely looks like he's on his way out. I spoke about this one yesterday, how uh, Napoli and Arsenal are locked in negotiations over this one. Uh, Arsenal said to want about £3.1 million for Ospina. Uh, Napoli willing to pay £2 million. And uh, that's a bit of a sticking point at the moment. 
and they're trying to negotiate that. But it doesn't look like Arsenal want to return for Ospina, although Ospina would make a great number two. Probably Ospina's looking at himself and thinking, I'm fed up with playing number two. I've just been doing that for years and years and years. I want to be a number one somewhere. He is a Colombian international. Why not? Why wouldn't he want to do that? And um, Napoli want to take him um, back on a permanent move. Um, I feel that will get done, but obviously the negotiations still continue on that one. What about Lauren Koscielny? Uh, been a stalwart Arsenal now for many years in the centre-back position. Um, but as we know, the main thing that always seems to hold him back is injuries. He was just on the verge of uh, going to the World Cup with France. Probably would have started in that World Cup as well. And then he got injured, was out of the World Cup. Last season, up and down for him. Injured, played a bit. Injured, played a bit. Came in towards the end of the season, had a bit of an indifferent end to the season. And uh, Arsenal now said to be willing to sell him with Borussia Dortmund, the club that are really, really interested in him. They've made inquiries about Lauren Koscielny. Um, Arsenal have valued Koscielny at £10.6 million. Um, we have to wait and see if that's going to be a valuation that Borussia Dortmund will be willing to pay. Uh, as I said, Koscielny's still a decent centre-back, but injuries really does hinder him. £10.6 million pounds would represent a good fee if Arsenal could get that for Koscielny. He's now 33 going on 34. Um, and as I said, a lots of injuries. But let's see how that develops out. And if he does go, does that then mean that Arsenal will be replacing him with William Saliba? Spoke about Saliba as well yesterday that Arsenal are in advanced talks with Saint Etienne um, over the youngster. Um, Saint Etienne valuing him at £27 million. I suppose if Arsenal could get £10.6 million for a Lauren Koscielny alongside some of the other players that um, they're looking to sell this season, that would free up funds to be able to go in and get somebody like a Saliba. The only thing about it is we're losing a lot of experience in Koscielny. Are Arsenal going to go youth over experience? I mean, it is a tough league to come into, especially as a young player from another league. We know that the Premier League is very physical. Uh, referees allow players to get away with a lot more. Um, so it's hard sometimes for a youngster to come into. They've got to adjust to it. Um, we heard the, the talks um, you know, from Lucas Torreira about adjusting to the life in, in England yesterday. So... Do Arsenal go youth over experience? Only time will tell, but Koscielny could be on his way out and Saliba possibly on his way in. Now, remember Malcolm. Um, last season, we were heavily, heavily linked to Malcolm last summer. <clears throat> um, a lot of occasions, it looked like we were on the verge of signing him. In the end, he ended up going to Barcelona. They paid an initial 41 million euros for him. Massive fee, massive fee for him from Bordeaux, um, went into Barcelona and it has just not worked out for him. He's barely figured for Barcelona. It was a bit of a strange signing at the time because you looked on it and you said, well, Barcelona, they, they've got wingers. They've got Dembele. They've got, you know, obviously you've got your Messi's and Suarez in there as well. And how's he going to get into that first team on a regular basis? Well, he hasn't been able to get into that first team on a regular basis and now Barcelona looking to move him on. Um, now Arsenal said to be one of the clubs that have inquired about Malcolm is a management team are currently negotiating and finding out from Barcelona just what they want to do. Do they want to keep him? If they want to sell him, what they're going to sell him for? It's going to be a big fee because, you know, Barcelona are going to want to recoup back a lot of the money that they spent on Malcolm. So it will be a big fee. Um, but how much will that fee be? Um, that's going to be the interesting one to see. Arsenal said to be interested, as I said, also Tottenham. For me, with the limited amount of budget that Arsenal have got, I can't see Arsenal going for Malcolm. I still think they'd rather go for a Ryan Fraser or a Yannick Carrasco to play out wide. But the, lots of speculation around today that Arsenal are interested in signing Malcolm. And a really interesting yesterday reading about Denis Suarez, of course, who we signed on loan from Barcelona um, in January. We was all hoping that he was going to come in and really make an impact, help to push us into the top four places, could be an impact player playing in the Europa League. 
he came in and he hardly figured. Now, really interesting yesterday that he was saying that when he came in at Arsenal, he was never more than 50% fit. He said that when he arrived, he was fit, but he picked up a, like a groin injury in training. And after that, he was never, ever more than about 50% fit, he said. And it was just a disaster for him. And that's why, I mean, we always were there. I mean, I remember going to lots of games and fans saying to me, What's, why did we buy this guy for? He never plays. Why are we not playing him? Why didn't he bring on Suarez? Um, seems that Suarez was never really ever fit when he was at Arsenal. An absolute disaster of a loan signing by Arsenal. Our signings recently have just been an absolute shambles um, when it comes to some of these players. Um, but Denis Suarez didn't work out and he's actually at the moment looking for a move out of Barcelona. I don't think Arsenal are going to come back in for him. Also, what I saw him play, um, he looked very quick. You could see he had a lot of skill. Wasn't too sure if his physicality would have suited the Premier League. A really small player. Um, I know, listen, there's, there's, there's other small players in the Premier League that have done brilliantly. Look at David Silva. But he didn't seem to have that sort of physicality like a David Silva or a Bernardo Silva or those sort of players had and or have. And um, I don't think he would have been suited to Arsenal at all, even if he had have been fit. But it um, looks like he's going to be moving on from Barcelona, but not to Arsenal. Right, let's get into a few of your um, comments today. Um, starting off with this one from Ponyboy. He says, uh, selling Chambers is a mistake, especially at a loss. He's a centre-back, a right-back, a defensive midfield squad player and would have been vital last season with our injuries. Sell Mustafi instead, for fuck's sake. Also, Fraser over Carrasco all day long. I really want to know what you guys think about that Fraser Carrasco thing in our poll. Has he got a point there where he says about selling Chambers? Because it's true, he can. He plays centre-back, he's played right-back, even though when he's played right-back, he's got absolutely skinned. But he can play that position. He was a defensive midfielder last year for Fulham. Done really, really well in a really poor side. Maybe we should be keeping Callum Chambers. He's used to the Premier League now. I don't know. Um, do we sell him or keep him? It's going to be really interesting to see. Does look like he probably also will probably cash in on him. But um, going to be interesting. Also, Christian Bielik. You see yesterday that uh, Christian Bielik, who's been on loan at um, Charlton, he's another one. He's done well in his loan spell there. Charlton have been promoted and he's put it out there and said, I don't want to return back to Arsenal to play no under 23s. Basically, he's saying, if I come back to Arsenal, I want to play. Bielik again, defensive midfielder, hasn't really, well, not figured for Arsenal apart from a couple of uh, League Cup games. So, interesting to see what happens with some of those players this summer. Um, Programming Island says, if we lose Torreira, we're going to be in the Europa League for the next 10 years. I don't think it's that bad, but I, and I don't think uh, Torreira is going anywhere. We know that Torreira, yes, he came out and said that he's finding it really hard to adapt to England. But listen, I'm sure he's going to adapt. He's saying himself he's going to put the effort in. I think first step is he needs to learn English. That is a really good way to, to, to overcome the barrier. Um, you see like even Gareth Bale over there in um, Spain, even though he's done well uh, in Spain, you know, scoring goals in Champions League finals and that overall he hasn't had a good time of it over there in Spain. And one of the things is he's never learnt the language and all the time he's been over there in Spain. And to me, you come to a new country, you're, you've got a contract there, you need to try and learn the language so that you can communicate and understand better the country, the lifestyle, everything. So I think Torreira will be all right. And uh, finally, let's get this one. Uh, Danny says, right now we need young players. Our starting lineup, in our starting lineup, we just keep changing it every season. There's no chemistry at all in the team. Makes a good point there. There isn't. Do Arsenal go for youth over experience um, this summer? That's going to be the interesting thing to see. Do they clear out some of those players that have been there for a very, very long time? He makes a good point there. Let's see what happens, particularly with those fixtures being out. Let's see how it all pans out this summer. Thanks for watching the show and we'll be back tomorrow.